Hello team, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. In this domain, in this session, we are going to discuss about domain 3 of CISSP. High level summary. It's a very important domain and it's a very complex also. A lot of people literally cry for this domain 3. It's a very big domain. And this domain is more from a product making domain because any company who are into product development and all that, they start from designing, they do the development, they do testing, they obtain the evaluation, then they deploy. So this domain is more from that point of view. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about the important areas you need to focus while you're preparing for this exam. So if you're new to this channel, click on the subscribe button, share in your network and if you know more about me, my name is Prab Nair and you can find my details on a LinkedIn. And uh, I also have a coffee shorts on some of the topics, cryptography and all that, where you, can, where you can find in the YouTube video. So let's start with the first part. So when you're talking about the domain three, in domain three, the first part is called as a security architecture. So you need to have a good understanding, not good understanding, high level understanding of SAPSA where we use. So SAPSA is a security architecture, which is aligned with the business requirement. TOGAF is basically the enterprise architecture which is used to organize people process technology in an effective manner. One example I can give you about the architecture is suppose I am on this particular stage which is called as weight 90 kg and I want to change to 60 kg. So I need a workout plan, I need a plan, I want to create some kind of a dietary sheets and everything but question is that how to organize, when to diet, what to eat, when to run and all that. So we have these building blocks. So these building blocks will be organized through a framework and that framework is called as an architecture framework which talk about how to start and how to finish. Same like you want to do CISSP. Now you have a two way self learning or training. So if, then you identify a resource, question bank, training and all that which is a very kind of a diversified thing. So organize them in a step by step way that is called as an architecture. So you need to have a good a basic understanding, not good basic understanding of SAPSA, TOGAF. Along with that, in this domain, if you go further, we have another topic is called as a security model, which talk about how subject communicate with the object. In security model example, like I'm building a database. In database, I want how the subject communicate with the database. So we need a rules. So we have a Bella Padula, we have a Biba, we have a Brior Nash. These are the three Bella Padula, Biba, Brior Nash and Clark Wilson. Very important from the exam perspective. So when you're talking about Bella, Bella talk about confidentiality first DOD model. Then we have a Biba focus on integrity. It is again a DOD model. Then we have a clerk Wilson. How to remember clerk equal to bank. In a bank we have a SOD. So it was an extension of Biba focus on integrity with conflict of interest. Not conflict of interest. Uh, yeah. So it is basically more from the point of view separation duty. It means one person will not perform end to end transaction. Then the fourth model was basically called as a uh, Brior Nash model. Brior Nash focus on the conflict of interest. It means if we have a development team and we have a production team, development team will not access to the production team and production team will not have access to the development team. So this is a, a, called as a conflict of interest. Today in the DevOps, in the multi-tenant environment, we basically use the Brior Nash model. So slowly and gradually we move ahead. We discuss about product is ready. We need to evaluate the product. So in order to evaluate the product, we have a evaluation methodology. So we have a TC second common criteria, focus on common criteria. It's very important. They have a seven levels. These seven levels is not about checking the level of security, but these seven levels, which is called EL1 to EL7, talk about the level of testing. So higher the level of testing, it means higher level of assurance we have. So in this section, you need to have a good understanding of what is protection profile, which is a baseline, which is set by common criteria, target of evaluation, the vendor who submit the product. And then the, we have called as a, security target, which is basically a documentation about how your product is basically working. So you need to have a very good understanding of that. Then you need to understand about the virtualization type one and type two. Type one is more secure than type two. It is easy to manage type one. Then you need to know about the bring your own device, choose your own device, MDM solution used to manage the mobile devices. Then IoT, ICS, primary thread with IoT, ICS is the availability. There is a dedicated video I made on the coffee shot on ICS. Very important for you to review. In IoT, Mirari attack is there. DDoS attack is a common attack in IoT and ICS. You must be familiar with the IoT networks and ICS network, especially their protocols like OPC, Moodbus and all that. Then we move ahead. We discuss about cloud in cloud. We talk about the five characteristics that must be there in a cloud. 
three service model and four deployment models. Along with that, you need to know CASB. CASB used to maintain the visibility. So you need to have a very good understanding of that. Then we basically talk about the responsibility metrics of the cloud provider and cloud customer. One thing you need to remember, cloud customer in all the three service model responsible for data and accountable for data and governance, whereas a cloud provider in all the three service model responsible and accountable for the physical security. In detail, you can review the CBK. I recommend you to review the CBK 6 edition, very to the point. Slowly and gradually, once you basically complete the cloud computing, service model, deployment model, responsibility metrics, and CASB, 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 we move ahead, we talk about the cryptography. In cryptography, you must be familiar with the cryptography history, transposition cipher, substitution cipher, semantic, primary advantage of semantic cryptography is it's faster, you must be familiar with the semantic algorithms, like example, AES and DES, the thin line difference between the AES and DES, AES is more secure. AES is basically run in a limited computation. That is why AES nowadays used in a softwares like TLS, IPsec, WPA2. So you must know the difference between the AES and DES, DES key size, effective key size, DES modes, modes are testable. Then we basically move ahead to the asymmetric process. In the asymmetric, we have a four algorithm, RSA versus ECC, then Diffie-Hellman versus Algamal, ECC used in a cryptocurrency, today used everywhere ECC. The reason why ECC is a new algorithm, which is a discrete logarithm, and it offers the similar level of protection like RSA in a small key size. So you need to have very good understanding of RSA versus ECC, RSA vulnerable for the side channel attack. Then we talk about the PKI, and in the PKI we have a CA, RA, OCSP, then CRL, you need to be very familiar with the OCSP, CRL, then we talk about uh, this one, which is called as a digital signatures, providing the non repudiation achieved through integrity and authenticity, hashing algorithm, which talk about SHJ and MD5. So these kind of a things you need to know from cryptography. Then we have a cryptography attacks, cipher text, uh, this is called known plain text attack, known cipher text attack, chosen plain text, chosen cipher text attack, pass the hash attack is a new attack in CSSP. Then we have a birthday attack, their associate countermeasures. To defeat all these common attack, increase the key length by which you can able to defeat these attacks. Then slowly and gradually you move to the physical security. You need to know the camera placement, camera security, HVAC data center, positive pressurization, negative air pressurization, extinguishers, type A, type B, type C, type D, sorry, A, B, C, D extinguishers we have. Then we have a different type of suppression systems. We have this water-based system like dry pipe, uh, deluge system, pre-action system. So you must be familiar with that. Along with that, you need to know the Uptime Institute, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4, which is talk about the physical security. So these are the some of the important areas we have in Domain 3. You can recommend. I will suggest you to review the CBK 6 edition, very to the point, very crisp, and somehow it will meet your objective goals. Okay. If you find this video useful, do share in your network and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye.